What's going on guys, Andrew Dreambark Gaming back here, and today we're going to be talking about the Astral Chain announcement trailer for the Nintendo Switch. Now, Astral Chain looks like it's going to be a sci-fi action game with focused around like an alien invasion type of thing with a lot of interesting character interactions based off the little bit of dialogue we get towards the end of the trailer. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. And we start off with two characters on our screen, one male, one female, doing like a Power Rangers morphing sequence type of motion with something on their wrist that then unravels and boom, we've got this AI fighter that we go on to see fighting alongside them in various forms throughout the rest of the trailer. Now, what initially strikes me about this chunk of the trailer is a, you've got two characters who continue to appear throughout the trailer and are referenced within the dialogue towards the end of the trailer, which strikes me as both of them are going to be relevant to the plot, and hopefully they may both be relevant to the gameplay. I think this could be really cool if it's one of those games where you kind of alternate between playing as the two of them, maybe for each mission you can choose between them, and I think it would be especially awesome if they make it so that the gameplay as each of them is a little bit different, rather than necessarily choosing one at the beginning and being locked into it. I think it's just a nice way to kind of mix things up within a game, and I think a lot of more recent games have started to do that, at least as some extent i mean even marvel spider-man you get to play as mj for some missions which doesn't mix things up a ton but it adds some extra spice which is pretty cool so let's go and jump into this ai fighter thing which kind of is a good segue into the combat system that i noticed about this game and that's that overall it seems extremely cinematic to me and like there are a lot of different combos and moves you can do we see everything from like fighting with swords and like punching and kicking to bow drawing within this and riding on top of the ai companion that takes the shape of a dog everything about it seems like it offers a lot of flexibility and that's why it kind of reminds me almost of a game like bayonetta where you can mix up your combat a ton if you take the time to actually learn a lot of the combos in that game but the combat system is also simple enough that if you're just jumping into it you can still feel really awesome just playing it for the first time within like 10 minutes or so which i think is something that hopefully this game gets right as well because i think it is something that's very easy to miss the mark on just because it's really easy to end up with too simplified to it's not giving you enough options to keep everything as really awesomely cinematic as a game like bayonetta does or being overly complicated to the point where it's not very approachable regardless i think this is setting up to potentially be very well especially considering towards the end we find out one of the people who is oversight on this project did work on bayonetta so let's dive into this ai character a little bit here we see it takes the form of something with like blade arms to something that's like drawing a bow as the human counterpart to it is making a bow drawing action to something that's a dog you can ride on and that's something that seems to make this game really unique as currently the kind of the vibes i'm getting in this game in terms of its style at least is reminding me of something like bayonetta like i keep referencing and something almost a little bit sort of like along the lines of the batman arkham games or marvel spider-man games if you crossed it a little bit with bayonetta because you do have open world aspects and such we'll get what we will get into into in a second here but regardless what seems to make that unique to me because this is something that none of those games is do have done is you have this ai companion fighting alongside you now that's something i generally like in games especially if you have a little bit of control over the ai partner because it makes me feel like i have someone who has my back who i'm not directly controlling it makes me feel like there's a little more at stake because i'm fighting for them and along with them it opens the opportunities for combos everything like that it seems like it could be a really fun blast if they execute this right my question is just going to be how are they going to implement it into the controls it's going to be sort of like a lot the way a lot of jrpgs tackle it and that you have an ai controlled partner but you can kind of decide what their tactical decisions are going to be based around like whether they're going to play offensively defensively etc is it going to be that you somehow directly control them and a really big question for me is could you do like local co-op where your buddy sits next to you on the couch and is controlling the bloody uh, AI companion for you, which is something I think could be a really neat feature if they're able to implement it, especially considering a lot of more recent games have kind of lacked co-op stuff, but that's a different topic for a different day. Overall, I think the combat system has a lot of potential here. It looks like it could be really cool. So let's talk about the visuals and audio a little bit, then I'll jump a little bit further back into the gameplay. Visually, this game is cell shaded, but it seems to be really high quality cell shading. It's really awesome to see the progress that cell shading as an art style is made going from games like you know way back to the legend is out of the wind maker up to like borderlands and now to a game like this where the cell shading is still present but i feel like it's not as omnipotent in terms of being a style it feels still very much feels like if you didn't like cell shading you could ignore this at least a little bit easier than you could in earlier games that took a similar formatting for their style now, in terms of sound, I already mentioned, this game's got a lot of guitar riffs from what they were playing for us. It sounds very epic. You've got some nice vocals going over everything that aren't necessarily, they're like a lot of O's and stuff, not necessarily consonant, like words and such. But I'm okay with that. I think that usually works well for a backing soundtrack. It sounds like something you'd hear in an action scene in an anime. Once more, perfectly fine with that and adding more to the Bayonetta reminiscence. So diving a little bit back into the gameplay, I touched a little bit before how it reminds me a little bit of Batman Arkham games and like the Spider-Man games and that it does seem like it's going to be open world. There seem to be a lot of glimpses of our characters kind of walking around in an open space. We even have a glimpse towards the end of the trailer of this bear type of character walking around. 
And it also appears we're going to have something mostly equatable to like a detective mode in that there's a scene where like a bridge or something is collapsing, some rubble's falling, and then the screen kind of flashes over, scan lines go through, and then you end up with like green highlighting the rubble pieces that are falling. And most of the rest of the world looks relatively normal. Very once more reminiscent of like a detective mode. Mix that in with the open world aspects. And I think there is a little bit of reminiscence back to those Arkham and Spider-Man games, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think open world can do a lot for world building of a game, which based off what we see in the trailer is something I'm very curious about is what exactly is going on here. Now this is going to segue pretty well into our plot theories that I've got going on based off the little bit of dialogue we have here. Most likely it's going to be totally ludicrous because there's not a lot hinting at exactly what's happening. We know we've got two characters that are in the police force. It seems like everything's going to be focused around them. It appears we have alien invasions of some level going on causing a decent amount of destruction but not to the point where society's totally collapsed by any means yet because there do still seem to be a number of civilized areas where peace is going on hence the urban world scenes and on top of that I mean you've still got a police force so things couldn't have completely went to crap yet. So let's go ahead and jump into these glimpses of dialogue we have. And the first one's going to be coming from a female character who seems to be talking to our two leads here, saying that they are leading humanity straight to damnation and they are doomed to be used by these idiots until they die. Now, a couple things about this. First off, who are the idiots that she's referencing that they're being used by? Could it be the police department, a larger government force, another organization? Maybe they've went rogue for the police force and they're working for somebody else and she believes they're doing the wrong thing. It could be any number of things. And in terms of the female voice, part of me almost wonders because we do see a female character petting a giant alien later in the trailer. If maybe she's taken on that role that some like sci-fi films and such have, where you have one character who sees these aliens that are invading as liberators and potential saviors. Perhaps she's among along those types of thoughts. Now, in terms of them leading a humanity to its doom, I'd also be curious to see what her perspective is on that. It seems to me like these aliens could be violent, though we don't see a lot of how they directly interact with humans other than the police in this trailer. So going to be hard to say there. All we see is a lot of the destruction around. Perhaps there's something we're missing and they're doing that intentionally to leave space for a plot twist later down the line. Next bit of dialogue that really stands out is you have this deep male voice with a spoken by a character that kind of reminds me design wise of like Professor Sycamore from Pokemon X and Y with more facial hair and looking overall more mature saying today has been most revelating. Finally, we're ready for the final stage. And then we have characters we can might be able to assume are our main characters asking, why did you make them? them most likely being the aliens and then saying i really hope you two wouldn't get caught up in all of this now the fact that he seems to know these two characters and you two see the way he's referencing them reminds me a lot of or implies to me that he most likely knows them perhaps he's even the police chief or something like that that's kind of one of the theories rattling around in my head right now and that he was kind of outwardly opposing these aliens but then inwardly he's actually behind and directly related to what's going on with them it sounds like he may have even created them and it sounds like he hit some final accord with them. Perhaps he liked these two officers that we see in action that are most likely our playable characters, and then they end up discovering something about them that now he has to go after them and destroy them. It's certainly a plot trope that we've seen done enough that I wouldn't say it's totally outside of the realm of possibility to see happen again here, and I think it could lead to some really interesting character interactions as it often does. And, it, and in terms of everything, after he's talking about like today's the day that we've been waiting for, that's when we get the little glimpse of that female character I thought might be behind that voice from earlier, petting a giant alien-like creature. And just for an idea of what these aliens look like, a lot of them remind me a little bit of the Flood from Halo, but if they were walking on four legs rather than two a lot of times, just for some idea of what's going on. Now, after all this dialogue, we have another male voice saying, now don't go dying on me. I'm thinking that might be the male lead because it's a different voice we've implemented. Doesn't seem like they've spoken a lot in the trailer. Hard to say overall. But just for an overall synopsis, guys, I'm really hyped for this game. It's actually probably going to be one of my more anticipated releases for this year based on what I've seen. It seems like it's going to be a really cinematic experience on the Switch, which is something I don't feel like we have a ton of on that system yet. And it's a great system, so adding something like that to the library is always a really incredible thing. So as per usual, if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Any, and let me know of any theories or ideas you have as to way, what exactly may be going on here. I'll be glad to read them. If not, constructive criticism is always welcome. And I'll catch you guys next time with some more trailer breakdowns.